Okay, this is my testimony on how I found out Jesus is the Messiah. And this is a shock to a lot of people. I did not grow up in church. I had never gone to church before until I had been born again. So my family is Christian, but all they had ever told me was that Jesus is God. They did not tell me any other, <laughs> like I did not know any other part of the gospel. Like I did not even know that Jesus resurrected until I was like 22. Okay, no one had ever sat me down and was like, no, Johnny, Jesus was born of a virgin. He did many miracle signs and wonders while he was here on earth. He was crucified and was resurrected and ascended to see the father and he's coming back. No one ever told me that. No one. And my family is Christian, but my family did not go to church. We didn't even go to church on like Easter and Christmas even. I think I went to church all of like five times in my life. Four of those times I was too young to remember anything. And then I think the one time I did go, like as like a 15 year old or something, uh, we were late. <laughs> and then I think um, one other time when I was a kid, I was in Chicago with my family. And then I just remember the pastor is saying, because there was no, the AC was broken. And then the pastor was like, y'all think it's hot? Well, I'll tell you where it's hot. Hell. <laughs> That's like, literally, that's all I remember about church. But I had never gone to church. Like, I had never gone to church where I knew people in the church. That was never my life. So, y'all, I was shook when I was 22. Like, I, I read, the, read the Bible for the first time at, like, the age of 22, right? I was shook when I read it and I was finding out the stuff Jesus was doing. I was like, what? He put dirt in somebody's eyes and then they could see again? I was like, what? <laughs> I was gripped. I was gripped. I was like, this is a riveting read. Like, I was so shook. I was so shook. And then when he came back to life, I was like, oh, y'all really thought y'all got him. He is alive. And I was, no, I was so shook. When I read the book of Daniel for the first time, when he went down, like, into the lion's den, I was like, oh, so when people say they're going into the lion's den, they're referencing the Bible. Like, and I was 22. <laughs> and I, when I read the book of Daniel and then the, the writing was on the wall, I was like, oh, that's where the, that's why people say that because it's in the Bible. Like, I was like, whoa, I didn't know people were referencing the Bible this whole time. <laughs> and then that's why I was shook when I started preaching and then other Christians said, that's not true, when it was literally what I had just read. But let me talk about that in part two. Part two. Quick correction. The first time I read the Bible, I was 23, not 22. Um, but I had never been to church before I read the Bible. So I was not indoctrinated into religion. So I had no idea that other believers were learning all of these lies so that when they read the Bible, they didn't believe what the Bible said. Because I got born again, and then I began to preach what the Bible said, and then other Christians started to hate me. And I was so confused at the beginning of my walk, because I was like, wait, why are Christians so mad at me? I'm just saying exactly what the Bible said. Why are they upset with me? And I remember one of the very first things that they got mad at me about was when I said, um, miracle signs and wonder shall follow all that believe. And if you have not experienced a miracle sign or wonder, as a, then you're not born again. And I, I still stand by that. I literally still stand by that. Um, and I remember everyone got so mad at me because all, all I had known was a miraculous Christian life. That's all I had known. I did not know religion. So when I came to the cross, um, like I was just walking my dog in the park and a stranger had prophetically seen me in a dream the night before and just was led into the park and then spoke to me and then prayed for me and then I was touched by the spirit of God and I was sobbing and then I read that the bible said that the holy spirit will be given to all those that ask so then I just asked for the holy spirit and then boom electricity is like 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 it's literally like a, an actual tangible feeling like I came face to face with the holy spirit I got baptized in the holy spirit and then was speaking in tongues I, I was not raised in a tongues speaking church. You know, I I was having prophetic dreams, like right when I got born again, 
you know, I was having prophetic dreams. I was meeting meeting even other believers who who experienced miracles. I was experienced heal. I was experiencing healings and deliverance. Like I was having, like I had demons cast out of me. I was experiencing healing. I don't have any more back problems anymore. So I just thought that that was every single Christian's walk because I came into the kingdom of God by a miracle. I like Jesus came out and got me. Like I literally came to Jesus by a miracle. And every and and the other, you know, Christians around me all came into the kingdom by a miracle. And so I was so shocked when when people were upset with me because I literally was like, "Wait, that actually is our portion though." Jesus said, "Everything that I've done, you shall do and even greater than I." So, how come there's people that aren't believing that? Why are people not believing this? And now I realize it's because they are indoctrinated into a gospel that excludes the power of God and that keeps them lukewarm. Part three. So um, I had only known a miraculous walk with Jesus. That's all I knew. So I would preach on what I knew and what I knew was miracles. If you are born again and you've never seen a miracle, you will see a miracle. If you are born again and you've never seen a healing, you will see a healing because that's what Jesus said. Because it was literally just what I read in the Bible that Jesus Jesus said he is our healer. He is our deliverer. So I literally read the Bible and I was like, wait, people don't believe in healings. People don't believe in casting out demons. I was so shook because <laughs> I was so shook because I it's all I knew. It was all I knew and right when I came to the Lord I got I got born again um and I just started having a distaste for sin I just like when I I, I drank a beer I remember and I was or I was born again I didn't know that drinking was wrong like I didn't even get to the point in the Bible where I had read to the point where it says to be sober minded but I remember I drank a glass of alcohol I could not finish it I think I had like four sips or something crazy like that. And I was at the bar and I, I was like, oh my God. I was like, I hate drinking now. Which is crazy because I was like a borderline alcoholic. <laughs> Which is crazy because <laughs> I literally used to be the worst binger. I used to be the worst bin, like binge drinker or whatever. And then I was just sitting there at the bar like, yo, since when did this happen? I hate drinking now? I was like. Okay, well, I guess I'm never doing that again. And I never did. And I never did. It was the weirdest feeling. And I remember being at the bar and like, I was just like sitting there. I just was quiet that day because I was just looking around at me and I was like looking at people like flirt with other people and like people were lusting after other people. And I started to see demons. Like I was like, like I was sitting there and I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, Ajani, there are demons operating in people and i was looking at people and i was like hmm this is getting a little bit ugly so <laughs> sin <laughs> so sin just fell off of my life like that because i had i i just had one you just need one touch of god like that's like you just need one touch of god so i was floored when i told people hey guys you can get free from sin and I'm public enemy number one. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Y'all don't know that you can be free from sin. And it's because their lukewarm churches are lying to them. They're literally indoctrinated. Part four of my testimony on how I found out Jesus is the Messiah. So um, I was young in my walk, but I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I was a spiritual Christian and I was so confused as to how there were so many christians living carnally i was like wait i'm reading the same book as them why are they not getting it and i came before the father i was like lord you need to explain this to me because i don't understand these things i you need to impart into me your understanding and i he he ministered to me what what it really means to have the revelation of jesus that's what it means to get born again. Um, a revelation is Jesus revealing his identity to you. And only Jesus 
can reveal himself to you. So in this life, in this world, the Lord is testing the hearts of every single man and woman, everyone. He's testing their hearts, observing their hearts, and seeing when their heart is humble enough, sincere enough for him to reveal himself and tell him, you know, tell them that he's the way. So a lot of people are reading the Bible and they have never actually had Jesus revealed to them. Um, you know, it, it reminds me of that one verse where Jesus says, you know, um, who is it that you say that I am? And the apostle Peter says, you are Jesus, the Messiah. You, you and, and says who he is. And Jesus said, it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but by the spirit. So it's only by the Holy Spirit that who Jesus is, is revealed to you. So that's why not everybody can understand the Bible. It's like, it's literally coded. Like the Bible is literally coded so that only the humble in heart, people who put off their pride, only the childlike in heart, only the pure in heart can see God. And that like, and that was the craziest thing that I realized that Jesus had so much grace on me that he found me worthy to know him. He, he, he gave me the grace. Like I was like, he gave me the grace that I was only worthy by grace that I could know him. It's like, y'all got to think about it like a VIP room. It's a VIP room. Everybody's trying to get in. And the bouncer, he's, he's looking, <laughs> he's looking and he's like, you come in. 